you've had, from what I understand, you know, packaging products for Beyonce's products, right? Yeah, yeah. It's um, we did a uh, there's a, a lollipop company out of uh, California that we did prototypes for um, to create uh, an insert because the lo- these high end lollipops were um, breaking in transit. Entrepreneurs in the Poconos. Invest, create, accelerate. Welcome to Pocono Mountains Podcast, Season 4, Episode 5. I'm your host, Jim Hamill. We're fortunate to have some really great stories of entrepreneurialism here in the Poconos. We're just a couple hours from New York and Philly to attract some top talent right here to our own communities, including within two business incubators, one at East Stroudsburg University, which hosts an annual Economic Outlook Summit coming up next month, and the other at the Storebridge Project in Honesdale, featured on Pocono Television Network before. We got to meet a few of the entrepreneurs and the Storebridge Project's Director of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, George Budman. We'll combine that with the folks at the ESU Innovation Center for the In-Person Summit in May at Kalahari and feature the story on the June episode of Pocono Mountains Magazine. More to come on the Storebridge Project for this episode in just a bit. The Poconos is a year-round destination for millions, with 2,400 square miles of mountains, forests, lakes, and rivers. With historic downtowns and iconic family resort, it's the perfect getaway. You can always find out more on PoconoMountains.com or watch PTN, the Pocono Television Network, streaming live 24-7. Now back to the episode. The Storebridge Project has a special place in my nostalgic heart. It's in my old elementary school. Now, a decade after WEDCO, which is the Wayne Economic Development Corporation, the County of Wayne and the Workforce Alliance started the business incubator, and it's taken off fertile soil for tech entrepreneurs of all kinds, plus training and high-speed internet. Here's a listen to two full interviews with George Budman, who spearheads the Storebridge Project's initiatives, and tenant Jason Deeron of Flyleaf Print. Enjoy. Hi, folks. Jim Hamill here with Pocono Mountains Podcast, sitting here on the third floor of the Storebridge Project in Homesdale, just overlooking the Lackawaxen River here. Uh, we've had a lot of rain recently and just great to be indoors here today with George Budman, the Director of Innovation and Entrepreneurship of the Storebridge Project. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. Tell me what it is you guys do here from soup to nuts. Soup to nuts. Um, well, we have several phases. We have a co-working space on a lower level um, that is open to the public, 8.30 to 4.30 uh, daily. And you can also have a subscription, access to the building 24-7 um, to have access to the same spot. We also have a prototyping lab, um, and we have prototyping classes uh, that if you have a, something you want to design and make, we have the people here to help you with that. We have uh, uh, CNC machines, we have a Glowforge laser cutter, we have 3D printers, and we have a new... Um, 3D design artist that can help us build those files in AutoCAD or free cut whatever you want. And then the top two floors of our building uh, is a business incubator where we are focusing on tech startups in the county. Uh, we currently have 16 offices in this building for incubator and we have 14 of those offices filled. So we only have two offices available um, to grow into. Space is at a premium, right? Space is at a premium. Um, what we're finding is that Folks come in, they might be introduced to the co-working space downstairs, doing some R&D. We get introduced, they talk about a plan, we introduce them to some of our partners. Next thing you know, boom, they have an LLC, they're in the the incubator program. That's really what the design and the vision was here, right? Because this is the Wayne Economic Development Corporation, you know, that really looks out for the economic well-being and growth of the county, but then also, too, Wayne Pike Workforce Alliance. Workforce Alliance really helps people get the training they need to to uh, you know jump into those kind of roles, whether it's entrepreneurialism or it's you know getting uh, trained up for different you know jobs in the workforce. Mm-hmm. So here you have a training room, you have these incubator spaces and the co working spaces. Seems like it's working out pretty well. It's it's come a long way. We're in our tenth year. Yeah. Um, we just finished up a large construction project where we expanded some office space. We had we turned two offices into six. Um, we've uh, kind of redesigned the um, the training room. They've updated uh, a big efficiency project, replaced all the windows to original looking, um, updated the furnace system to you know a high end efficiency natural gas furnaces, um, and the place is busy. Yeah. Um, the co working space sees about a hundred people a month. Um, 
Office are filled. The training room is filling up. We just started training. The con contractors left April or March 30th. We had training in, the, in there uh, April 2nd. Jeez. Uh, we have a recovery specialist training going on right now through the month of April. We have Penn State coming in for a leadership class in May. Uh, we have a digital literacy program that we're building. Uh, we also have 3D design classes we're starting up in April. So, And that's all through Workforce Alliance. Yeah. Um, they're one of our partners. The Chamber's one of our partners. Um, we're also partnered with the uh, Small Business Development out of uh, University of Scranton, and that gives us great legal advice for our entrepreneurs, you know, through the Penn State Legal Service. Uh, we're also partnered with uh, e uh, University, East Strasburg University uh, for the Keystone Innovation Zone. Mm -hmm. We are currently the only Keystone Innovation Zone building in Wayne County. We're looking to expand on that and build corridors throughout the county. So when our entrepreneurs... Our incubator program is three to five years. The, the KIZ program is eight years. So it's like we can't, you know, we can't push people out of the KIZ zone until eight years. So we're looking to put other buildings in that program. So when they outgrow us, we can put them in the community, you know, before the eight year sure. you know, trademark. So that's what we're looking to do and, you know, partner and grow and grow and grow and create jobs in Wayne County. Yeah. And build a community here at the same time. And the, a lot of these businesses, and that's a that KOZ zone, Keystone Opportunity Zone, is something uh, of a of a leg up, if you will, to to allow for lower overhead or or not have the the um, whether it's tax abatement or something like that, right? The, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's tax credits. The KOZ yeah. is a tax credit, money in your pocket for up to eight years. Mm -hmm. So if you're growing and you're growing your business, it's a great program. Um, it's amazing and. Um, I think about four or five of our current clients use the KIZ program at the moment. That's fantastic. Because yeah. it just makes you more competitive as you're starting oh. your business. Because as we can face it, it's hard to compete in the, the global economy right now. And really, this is kind of a, a global story here, even though it's a local story about the Pocono Mountains region and the incubator spaces at ESU and here in Honesdale and Wayne County. But you're also seeing this um, groundswell then of entrepreneurs who are finding this a wonderful place to call home and having the resources here within the Storebridge Project to grow their brain children. Right. Yeah, the one thing with a tech startup is your, your own liability and your own asset. It's not like you have inventory you can back up on or a building to sell. It's you. And if you don't work that day, you don't make money that day. And that's the hard part that people don't see. Right. Um, when they think of a business, they think, oh, you're building assets, you're building assets, you know, you can eventually sell that. But it's really the person. And we have um, around $10 million a year of a business in this building. Wow. And it's it's small, one and two person businesses, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, and they're dealing globally, as we as you'll see with Jason and Felix, um, Max, uh, Dennis, um, Scott, Alejandra, uh, Jay. I mean, there's, you know, um, everybody's working. Um, even uh, we have a, an OSHA trainer, uh, CPR, first aid trainer in the building. He's working via Zoom and training people all over the country, wow. right out of the Stormbridge, which is amazing. That's really impressive too, because I can go back kind of in my own you know uh, lifespan here. This was uh, a Stormbridge Elementary School, my third grade classroom. I think might be right where we're sitting yeah. right now. And to think of just how this uh, county facility, the county picked up this this former school property. You know, they house some other county agencies in the other portion, but this really from the from the ground floor, which was our elementary school gym, all the way up here to the classrooms, has now just transformed into something that I think it's it's a source of pride, not just for the Honesdale community, which has you know had a renaissance of late, has a lot of great things on the horizon, and a beautiful downtown to live in, and that's obviously why I'm here, you know, with my family. But a lot of people that are drawn to this, then too, because you don't find some place like the Sorbridge right. Project everywhere out there. Right. It's um, it's really a an amazing thing and i've traveled around and looked at other incubators around the state we are the only one that does not have the parenthood of a university like penn state has 27 incubators around um, esu has their own incubator lehigh has their incubator penn college has theirs um penn university has one they have wet labs they've had nobel prize winners come out of their incubator you know we're this is a county project um the county commissioners are involved we meet with them every week every month um, the county courthouse, the county maintenance folks take care of the building. They have huge pride. Almost every one of the, the maintenance folks that work here went to school here. Right. 
and they have stories about you know every room so it's a really cool uh entity i've lived in wayne county for almost 40 years now i moved here to work with a startup in 1986 um still here yeah after almost 40 years of uh, working in publishing education you know just and now being in charge of this it feels like i've been in training my whole life to take over this role and work with adults who are creative um have great ideas need help need that vision to move their self forward that don't necessarily want to go you know out of the county to work in a factory or you know they want to build their own dream their own ideas so it's really an incredible uh, daily experience the conversations i've had over the last couple of months and just like i go home and just like i can't sleep because of this overwhelming conversation i had all day long about ai or you know package design or you know something to 3d printing a boat or you know crazy fun stuff that's going on every day right here in wayne county i think that's a testament to who you are and me just knowing you in a short uh t- time frame here but understanding that you are very passionate about you know the mission here at the Sorebridge project about collaborating with various people it seems like you've really kind of cultivated something that was already being cultivated but now just ramped it up where you have you know some of the new construction done so you can kind of enhance and, and maximize the space mm-hmm. here for all those folks who you know might not even realize in a couple of years time they're going to come up with that idea and they can incubate it here and grow into something that'll be sustaining for wages for you know folks here in in the Poconos area who, who want to get into that line of work you know or they can grow into something that's like you know global right. <laughs> and, and that's yeah. really impressive it that is. it can all start here and it's amazing because some of the new people that have, are coming into the building i met on a bike ride in wayne county and we started conversation um i've been biking in this county for since i started moved here i bought my first bike in 1988 and i biked almost every road and the people I've met um, I stop and talk to people along the way and it's like you just start a conversation and that's how I got here um, I retired from teaching in June and I just started riding around starting conversations again in Wayne County and, yeah. and I ran into Mary Beth Wood who's been the executive director for Wedco for 20 some years yeah. and we sat down and we had a three hour conversation and it was just like I was just like interested in what was going on and all of a sudden, it's like six weeks later, I'm taking over the storage project. And it's just like, and it's been like a blank slate. And I spent the last 20 years in a classroom and working with students, taking them to the next stage, you know, and I have students all over the world doing amazing things to now take that experience and working with adults um, that are doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's an incredible day. I, I love working here. So you got two spaces open right now. Of course, they might be filled by the time we even air this. But at the same time, what is the best avenue for people to learn more? I mean, they can certainly stop in oh, right here. This is 646 Park Street. 646 West Park Street, right. big three-story building. You can't miss it. Yeah, I'd say that's the best way. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm all about person to person. Um, my door is always open. Mm-hmm. And um, you, we have a website, storebridgeproject.com, and you can reach out to me through that. Um, or you can talk to anybody in town and say, hey, what do you know about the Storebridge Project? Huh. Um, you know, it's it's an amazing uh, building. It's an amazing project. And I just, I, I'm really excited to see where it goes. Yeah, I mean, the future is very bright, especially when you have all these individuals really staking a claim in, you know, this project, but also then to the, the greater community. You see the, the Jasons and the Felixes and, you know, uh, just e- each of these uh various businesses dennis's or or otherwise they 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 can all coexist here and then lean on you or workforce alliance or wedco overall you know to to really enhance their decision making process Mm -hmm. or or their their product or their approach to business so it's it's really uh, a unique thing i think seeing this from the outside looking in you know i'm not an entrepreneur but entrepreneurs must really have a great opportunity here more so than they would if they just tried to do this on their own absolutely um it's not just internet access it's not just having a room to sit in it really is um creating that symbiotic relationship throughout the whole building you know originally we looked at it was a scale of like okay you start in a co-working space you move up and that's the energy would flow up and i was like no wait a minute i'm upstairs but i know somebody in a co-working space that this person can talk to so the energy now is is all over the place and I have 
you know, and then it goes out across the river, downtown, yeah. you know, and we're all of a sudden we're like at the diner reading someone and saying, you need to talk with this person. Uh, mm -hmm. Or we're, you know, sawmill cycles are where, you know, here and now somewhere in town, we're saying, this is a conversation we started over there. It needs to come over here and involve you. So it really is, I don't really know anything, but I love to talk about things. <laughs> so it's a perfect role for me to go, hey, that's a great idea. Yeah. I know somebody over here that has that same, you know, a similar concept that we could marry together. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's, it's the benefit of not having any real life skills, but <laughs> being able to talk about stuff you know, right? is, is, is where I. The great convener. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's it right there. Yeah. Well, George Budman, anything you want to leave us with here uh, about the Storebridge project and, and the future of, of what this, you know, beautiful facility really has been and can be? Well, it's not just about a single person. It's not just about us building. It's not, it's building that community and working with others, even though you can be an entrepreneur, but you can't work in a void. You know, you might have your times of solitude, but you need to come out and mingle. So if you're in the area, swing by, sit downstairs for a couple minutes, bring a coffee, climb the stairs, do whatever you want to do, use the building, and um, let's make it grow together. Congratulations on all the success and the future success here at the Storebridge Project. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us here on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Sure thing. <laughs> Hey guys, Jim Hamlin here with Pocono Mountains Podcast. We just talked to George Budman here at the Storebridge Project. Now we have one of the tenants here, one of the entrepreneurs here, Jason Deron with Flyleaf Print. Jason, welcome to the podcast. And thanks for sharing with us your tale of how you built this business. This is a business that packages items for various different companies. I'm looking around the room here. I see Casper, I see Nectar, I see Mocha Origins, one of our fine Pocono members here in the uh, Pocono Mountains region. But why did you choose the Storebridge Project as a place to really build and grow Flyleaf Print? Well, um, we started the company in New Jersey, or Jersey. Um, our co-founders are from Jersey. Um, they're still there. But um, we had a company in Fairfield. That's where we started. And uh, I was living up here, traveling there three days a week. So two hours both ways. It was a bit, bit long. So um, we decided to cut that back, uh, work a little more remote. Um, I live in Starlight, PA, which is northern Wayne County, yeah. uh, with no Wi-Fi, no internet whatsoever at that time. So um, contacted the people down here in Honesdale, um, John Fritz, actually. Um, he put me in touch with Mary Beth at Whitco, and eventually I ended up here in, at Storebridge downstairs, which they have the greatest Wi-Fi around. Tell me about it, man. I've used this on multiple occasions to do work. Uh, right in what we do, but what you have to do, why do you need it? Why do you need that internet access, of, of course, to, to really kind of communicate, but also to build a lot of what you do? Sure, sure. We, we do a lot of Zoom meetings, obviously, with our clients um, remote, um, but we do a lot of art files. So for packaging and, and print, you know, art files can take a long time to transfer. Um, you know, we use other, you know, file services, but still you have to, you have to download it to those services. Um, so again, the internet was a big issue. Um, we decided at that time, um, right pre-COVID, to actually move our headquarters here. Once we started talking to Whitco and, and being involved in the store bridge, I was working downstairs. And eventually um, they said, hey, you know, w would you want to try to become part of the program? So join the program and, and here we are in our beautiful office upstairs. So what has the store bridge project enabled you to do from you know, a programmatic standpoint, like what kind of things are you able to tap into aside from, you know, robust upload and download speeds? I mean, you're part of a community here, right? And you can kind of like lean on all the others in that group. Sure. Yeah. We have, we have a lot of uh, local graphic artists that we tap into, um, which is great. Keep a lot of things local, um, a lot of freelancers that way. So yeah, we, we, we take advantage as, as much as we can. Yeah, the Storebridge Project, this is really unique too, isn't it, to it be is. part of this community? What's it like to kind of show up here and have your neighbors around and kind of work side by side with other entrepreneurs with varying degrees of differentiation in what they specialize in? It, it, it's great. You know, uh, you come in, grab a cup of coffee, and, you know, you meet George, da you know, down the hall or, you know, Dennis downstairs, you know, and we'll chit chat here and there, you know, lunchtime. And, you know, there's a lot of things that we do talk about, you know issues they're having, issues I'm having. They might have some great insight into something. So it's great to exchange that. This is a business incubator then too, right? So what is the long range plan for Flyleaf Print from the standpoint of like using this as a place to grow? Do you 
potentially expect to outgrow, you know, something like this or, or what is the long range for you? Yeah, we, we, we probably expect to, you know, outgrow this. Um, when we first started here, you know, the office was completely empty. Um, what you see in here is not what we had. Um, you know, we only recently got this table. We're starting to do a lot of kitting for some of our startup customers. Um, so we, we kit and mail out of here. Um, so we have UPS FedEx coming here every day. Um, they have drop-offs, they have pickups. Um, we do actually USPS as well. So, so yeah, I think we're probably going to um, exceed our office space at some point. That is really the the nature of the yeah of what an incubator is. It, uh, it, it kind of helps those those businesses get that leg up and that start up, and then spread the wings and fly. So, um, when you're talking about what you guys have done in the the couple of years now that you guys have really been um, gaining more customers and gaining more clients like what kind of names would you be able to toss around about i mean i can see them you know visibly here but for even the podcast folks you've had from what i understand you know packaging products for beyonce products right yeah yeah it's um we did a uh there's a a lollipop company out of uh, california that we did prototypes for um to create uh an insert because the lot these high-end lollipops were um breaking in transit so we did a lot of we did um some prototyping with that, 3D modeling. Um, we didn't do it here, George. You know, we didn't do that here, but we did it with our partner um, on the West Coast. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you know, Casper Sleep was our first client. You know, uh, co-founders of Casper Sleep came to one of our co-founders said, hey, we're going to this meeting. We need business cards. And that's how it started. Wow. With, with Casper. Okay. So, you know, Casper Sleep. And then we, we started getting involved in the, in the, you know, mattress in a box. So Nectar came along, um, Sonu, another one. Um, and we do a lot of work for these manufacture- mattress manufacturers in the United States. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And what, which product was the Beyonce product, if you don't? That was the lollipop. Oh, that was the lollipop. Yeah. They, oh, they, were, right. they were custom lollipop. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right. For, for events. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. I see Jack for, you know, so, you know, this cumulus thing. So there's, there's a lot of um, interest in what you guys do because really we're living in a different economy than we used to, yeah. right? It's less of a brick and mortar go you know purchase things in person it's yep. a lot of deliveries right yeah direct to consumer has been you know huge for us you know we, we we specialize really in packaging we become an extension of our startups so they're very good at what they do you know they have a product they know how to market it really well but they might not know how to deal with print and packaging so they ask us to come on board mm-hmm. and we become an extension of that procurement team um, we go out, we go out to our network of vendors here in the United States, China, uh, Mexico, Canada, Vietnam. Um, you know, Farmer's Dog is one of our largest clients. So at Farmer's Dog, we produce, you know, 70,000 insulated totes a month for the Farmer's Dog coming out of Vietnam. So yeah, they're, you know, it's, it's amazing how direct consumer has exploded, you know, for us um, and, and continues to do that. So it's like a normal day. Or Jason at the office. Normal day is uh, grab my cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we need that coffee. <laughs> um, start up the computer. We we uh, developed a proprietary technology that that we that we use to track our our projects. Okay. So we put in the specs for our project. We then go out to the marketplace and find the best location for manufacturing based on where the product is going to end up. So we'll find the best spot. We'll go out for for bids. And we'll put all that information in our system. And then our vendors can go in, put their pricing in. We look at the pricing. We find who the best, um, you know, in the, not necessarily is price. It could be location too, quality, things like that. So we do that. And our, our clients can go into the system as well and monitor their jobs and understand where their job stands. Okay. You know, if it's in pre-press, we do our proofing in there as well. So our proofing, you know, automatic email goes to our clients, say, hey, if there's a proof there for viewing, they'll go in, pull it down, look at it, see if it's good. If it's not, you know, they'll put some you know, information in, say, hey, this this looks a little off, and we'll go back and, and reproof it. And then we'll go to production um, and then fulfillment, and all of that is tracked. So they automatically get information about when it's shipped and where it is in transit and when it's delivering. I think one of those like realizations that people have to have then is that this is a far different economy for an entrepreneur to live in where you know a lot of this stuff is happening globally it's happening nationally but you can have 
your headquarters here in the Storebridge Project, yeah. because you have that connectivity to the outside world, that provides you with the tools you need, right? Absolutely. You know, when we first started the business, um, we only dealt really with local vendors, you know, in Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey. Um, but we've expanded, you know, in our five, almost six years now, we've expanded our network to, like I said, to China, Vietnam, um, Spain, you know, so there's we, there's just this global network that we have really started tapping into that benefits our, our end clients. And I think just bringing that full circle then, so you live here. I do. And so you love living here. It's maybe the outdoors. It's maybe the the clean air, the, 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 the community that exists here. But, you know, you can plant yourself here in the Poconos and have that access to that global economy, right? Absolutely. I, I, I moved here from Jersey when I was eight years old. My parents moved us here and uh, grew up in Equinox, Pennsylvania. Sure. Ran out of Delaware and um, went to school at Preston Elementary School. And yeah. I went to Hancock High School. Okay. Uh, graduated and left the area. Went to high and went to college, never came back. Hmm. Then fast forward to where I am today, where I'm here, I'm back here about seven, eight years now. Okay. And love it. You know, brought up three sons here, went to Honesdale High School. Yeah. It's been a great experience. And I think, you know, I, I graduated from Honesdale High School in 2000. Um, a lot of similar mindsets there was, hey, if you want to excel and go beyond here, you've right. got to leave the area. Exactly. But yep. now, especially with the Storebridge Project and other things happening in the community, you can be here and you can make it work. Absolutely. I mean, we're not far from the city. Right. You know, jumping into the city is not a bad thing. You know, we, we have a lot of clients in Brooklyn. So, you know, popping into the city is not a big deal. Um, you know, it's 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 great. It's a great location. And I mean, you just grew up here, you moved away, but it, it is probably that uh, quality of life that exists here that really kind of draws you to want a home base here. It is. It's 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 home. Right. You know, it's familiar, you know, so, you know, having my kids grow up here was, was great. You know, everything, you know, you know, people, you walk down main street, you know, people say hello, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice experience. Yeah. Really I mean, it's the rat race is the rat race right? in the, in the big cities in the suburb suburbs, but here you have that, like everybody knows everybody. Absolutely. And then you have that network then to, to lean on like the Georges and yeah. the Felixes and uh, Scott's and everybody else throughout Dennis and, you know, so many other, uh, folks who are coming in new. Yeah. All the time. I'm excited about that. Yeah. That's cool stuff. Anything you want to leave us with here before we bid you adieu here at Flyleaf? I don't think so. I just, it's, it's been a great experience here and, you know, we look forward to seeing where Storebridge goes next and, um, interested in learning about the new, new people coming in. So yeah. Jason Deeron with Flyleaf Print here in the Storebridge project. Uh, certainly somebody who's, uh, package is probably coming to you sometime <laughs> soon if you're buying anything online <laughs> all, right, all right jason thank you all right thank you yep. all right the storebridge project right in honesdale serving the needs of entrepreneurs and helping to boost the economy right here in the pocono mountains head to poconomountains.com to learn more thanks for listening to pocono mountains podcast we'll have a new episode each week highlighting lots of the fun things you can experience while you're visiting the poconos Subscribe and leave a review and or comment on whatever platform you listen. The Kalahari Food and Not Just Wine Festival is coming Sunday, May 19th to the Pocono Mountains. Savor bites from the best of Kalahari dining, sip beverages, enjoy live entertainment, and more. Get tickets today at kalahariresorts.com slash tickets. We're back. Thanks for listening to Pocono Mountains Podcast. I'm Jim Hamill. Now for a Pocono Mountains Podcast Extra. Another huge economic development opportunity in the Poconos restoring passenger rail between New York City and Scranton, right through the Pocono Mountains. Brianna Strunk has more on that big effort from a recent Pocono Mountains magazine episode. Enjoy. Who wants to add $84 million a year every year to the local economy? Yeah. Local real estate agent Tiffany Bailey Romay joined a crowd of 500 at Kalahari Resorts and Conventions to rally for rail. At the public information session and celebration hosted by the Pocono Mountains Visitors Bureau and key partners, Tiffany learned about major developments in restoring passenger rail service between Scranton, the Poconos, and New York City. I have been here since 97, waiting for the train. Of course, Moving up here, everyone said, the train is coming, the train is coming. And then you, it was a dead stop. However, today felt, actually in the last year, 
I saw the progression. I saw the movement. I saw the money. This project is one of 69 across the country recently accepted into the Federal Railroad Administration's Corridor ID program, which granted each recipient an initial $500,000 for development and research. Larry Malski, who has worked behind the scenes for decades on the Scranton to Port Authority project, says the route is already further along the tracks than many others. We feel we've got the steps put together. We've been spending money on engineering and environmental and all these other things that are, have to go into it. So we believe we've got a head start on most of those other 69 successful applicants because we've done our homework. You're the conductor of the Phoebe Snow on its last run. How do you feel today? Well, it's, it's one of those things in your life you hate to see go off. Passenger rail service has not connected Scranton, the Poconos, and New York City since 1970. Larry was 18 at the time and rode the very last train with a friend. He recalls it was a somber day for everyone on board. They knew it was the end of an era. Um, and, you know, a lot of people just figured after that it'll never come back. But perseverance is the most important uh, quality as far as I'm concerned, and uh, that's what it took to bring it back, and we're going to bring it back. According to an Amtrak study, the train could make three round trips every day at just under three hours each way, accommodating half a million riders per year. Trains would have Wi-Fi and full dining and beverage options. Imagine a relaxing ride on your way to visiting family or an extension of your office on the way to work, as Congressman Matt Cartwright recently explained during a press conference outside his office. This proposed route also connects us to a wider selection of health care services, sporting events, cultural activities, and vac vacation spots. It's about jobs. There would be several stops in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, including in Mount Pocono and East Stroudsburg. The mayor of East Stroudsburg looks forward to seeing small businesses flourish. We are excited. We are ready. I cannot wait to, to be able to walk down to our great downtown, jump on the train, and head into the city or northern Jersey. And even the reverse, to get those Jersey dollars and that New York dollars spending in our area. This will be a boon for tourism in northeastern Pennsylvania. And I'm just so happy to be a citizen of northeastern Pennsylvania and seeing us getting this type of investment, which is significant. Advocates of the long planned restoration say this is the first time the project has garnered this level of bipartisan local, state and federal support, including from President Biden, a Scranton native himself. He had a real focus on this because he understands our region. He understands the potential of it. He understands how uh, a train from here to New York could benefit this region. Back at the rally, Tiffany says she commuted between the Poconos and New York City for years and knows many others who still do. The idea of a new transportation option making her Pocono proud. The wear and tear on your car, gas going up, the carbon footprint, and I always tell people even when they're moving here, that's the worst part. If you can get through that, you're good. Now they don't even have to get through that. Most of the rail lines between Scranton and New York City were preserved and remain in place, but there's still much work to be done before getting the train back on track by the projected 2028. <laughs>